and share with somebody, call in, engage us on social media in some way to share your story, to share your lessons that you have learned. It's a lot of people out there who have journals and books and things about the love of their mother and the lessons that they learn. Call in and share with us tonight, and that is 770-415-2149. But as always, the song that got through playing was A Mother's Love. And that was by Jim Brickman. It brought us into a place of understanding the sacrifice and the different things that a mother goes through to bring you to in through this world. It is a very crucial process that we must understand. And we all have different types of mothers, but no matter what, we were brought here and we got here by a mother. So we have to accept that no matter what and how we live with our mother and how we, what we call her and who we were raised by. Those are different. But in the scripture, and I found many scriptures to talk about um, actually how we're supposed to um, treat our mother and things that we're so, supposed to remember. And what I wanted to emphasize about the lessons that we learned. So I found in Proverbs 1, the second part of 8, and actually in Proverbs 6, the second part of 20. And if it was in the church, they would say the B part of the um, statement. And it says, do not forsake your mother's teachings. And it fit right in talking about lessons that we've learned. So a lot of times the teachings that our mother have taught us, and sometimes we don't understand that lessons are not necessarily the lessons that somebody actually sat down, gave us a book, gave us a manual, but the lessons are the examples of life that were led and the struggles that she went through in order to show us how to reach a better place in life. So don't forsake those teachings. Be keen, be aware. Sometimes we have to sit back and reflect on those. So right here before Mother's Day, this is a good opportunity for us to think about the lessons that we were learned and how they impact our relationships. So I want you all to think on that, that scripture, Proverbs. Do not forsake the teachings of your mother. And then also, I was in a mood. Of course, I found more than one, but I'm going to only share another one. I'm going to flip because I didn't write this one down, but I know where it is. It's Proverbs 22, and it is 6. So scroll with me for a while if you got your word. But basically, it is train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So that's for the mothers that's on the line. It's about a lot of times we're afraid if we teach them something that won't stick with them. Sometimes they might stray from it a little bit, but they always come back to it if the training is actually instilled in there. So make sure that you are putting and implementing those trainings and those teachings. And we know Proverbs is the book that gives us the lessons and the words that we should follow by. So that is where we're going to be talking tonight about those lessons that impact. So I'm going to tell you about some of the lessons that I've learned from my mother and how they have impacted my life, how they've impacted my relationships with my kids, with my husband, with my coworkers, all of those different type of relationships. And we're going to dissect a little bit. And I mean, I'm not going to be a theologian for you tonight, but I'm going to, we're going to talk about different types of mothers in the Bibles and how it relates to our different relationships. When you talk about spiritual mothers, when you talk about work mothers, when you talk about birth parents. So recognizing the difference when we're talking about those different type of lessons that we learn from our mothers. So we're going to play a few more songs. And of course, they're not gospel artists, but they are empowering, uplifting songs and the next song is actually by um, Celine Dion, and it's called Mama. So it's actually an honor to her. And then Carrie Underwood, Mama song is about how she's already taught her to allow her to spread her wings and know that she actually garnered those lessons that were learned, and she's learned them, and she can live by them. So we're going to talk about those lyrics when we come back. So don't leave me. Stay with me so we can talk about some of the lessons that you've learned as well as some of the lessons I've learned along this little journey of life.
everybody. A little bit more people have joined us to dive into this conversation, whether you're going to text it in to me, talk to me via social media, or you have called into the line at 770-415-2149. Tonight, we're talking about the lessons from our mothers. In honor of our mothers, Mother's Day is coming up in a few days, and how it impacts our relationships is what we're discussing tonight. The song that just played, um, Celine Dion's Mama, it was about um, actually a love and an adoring and a respect for her mother. Then Carrie Underwood's song, A Mama Song, was about letting her know that she had done well, that she is going to, uh, she followed her mother's teachings, she's learned her mother's teachings, and it will work for the rest of her life. So going back to what we, our scripture for tonight, which was Proverbs, do not forsake your mother's teachings. We're talking about different types of mothers, as I said, we're going to talk about. We're going to first dive in and talk about some of the women in the Bible where we found that they were different styles of mothers. We always talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, what everybody achieves to be, want to be the one who wakes up early, wants to be the one who her kids are proud of. And the thing is, Kids are proud of you as a mother, and they might look differently, but we don't all expect our mothers to act the same, be the same, because we all need different people in this world, or we'd be kind of robotic. All of us would be the exact same way. So I have different lessons than, than you because I have a different mother, but some of us have similar intertwined lessons. I have siblings, and we all, I'm sure, remember different things about our mothers. Even my kids, they could tell you different things that each of them remember that I've taught them, even though they were all raised in the same house, but it was at different times. So when you think about it tonight, think about the lessons that you learn. And lessons don't mean have to be bad things, but the lessons that you learn, how do they impact your relationships? And some of the things that we bring from our childhood do impact our relationships in a negative way. So we need to make sure of which habits, which traditions are the things that we need to hold on to to keep in our relationship, to actually empower and equip it to be its best. And we're not holding on things that handicap us. So jumping into some of the women in the Bible, I am going to... Um, start off talking about Hannah. Hannah was um, a mother. And the thing that was great about her, and of course all the women in the Bible, one of the things that they did, uh, most, of, most of them were teaching their kids God's word and bringing them up in God. We're going to talk about, I know one mother who really lost track and really wasn't teaching her son about God. It was all about some other things. But Hannah, she dedicated her life back to God her son's life back to God. So there are times that you can remember when your mother, what we call dragged us to church or required us to do things in church. And I can remember, um, actually as a little child having to stand up. And I mean, all of us remember Easter speeches. All of us remember special occasions, but we can remember those times when we were like, why are we doing this? Why are we getting up talking in front of people? And those are the times that you say, okay, I'm being equipped for something in the future. You didn't know then, but if you look back now at what you're doing and what it was in church that your parents had you doing, whether it was music, whether it was talking, whether it was working behind the scenes, whatever it is, your parents were trying to help you develop your gift in God. So think about those lessons. And I know a lot of us rebelled against it. We didn't want to do those things. But then when we became parents, we did those exact same things. We found items, we found things to embrace in our church and those seeds to be watered in church and for them to give their gifts back to church. So that's what Hannah did. She dedicated her child's life back to God. So if you got that memory, if you can remember the first time that your parents actually embarrassed you in church and had you stand up and do something that they thought was just absolutely wonderful and cute, but you were just totally embarrassed by it, but it was the actual gift that God was trying to pull out of you. And here you are as an adult, still standing up talking in front of people. So it's amazing how those little things and lessons actually turn over into your adult life, how they can compact impact your personal or your professional relationship. So remember, sometimes the things that are is impacting your life is all the way back to your childhood, and you need to sit down and write out, is this something that is positive or is this something negative that is impacting your relationship? Now, then we can think about Joabed. 
what did she do? She was Moses' mother. Okay, that gives us a different type of mother. She gave birth to her son, but she wasn't necessarily the mother that raised him. And all this, there are people out there who they have a different birth parent besides the woman or women that they were raised by, who they were nurtured by. That doesn't make the person who gave you birth any less of your mother. But the fact is, there was a sacrifice that needed to be made in that time. And there are some sacrifices still in our time that need to be made. Why mothers have to put you up for adoption, why you have to go live with other people. Your mother may be going through something at that time, and she knew you would have a better life and a better opportunity if you were raised by someone else. So if you have, at some point, you were adopted, you were um, nurtured, and you were raised by somebody else. So still remember you were given birth to by somebody who had to give her sacrifice in order to bring you into this world. So there is that lesson of sacrifice as a mother that you learn. There's that lesson of sometimes you have to give up something that you've actually brought into this world, something that is actually naturally that you've given birth to. God requires you to pass it over to somebody else to actually fulfill it and make it better. And then it will come back to you if you're willing to let go of it. That's a great lesson. And there are things in our life that can only come back to us better if we we're willing to let go of them. And that's that's a big sacrifice, something that you had for nine months. And she held him even for longer than nine months, as long as she could hide Moses. And then you have to give it up to allow it to live to its fullest. And for this time, she had to give up Moses to allow him to just to live. So realize that there are things in our life that we're going to have to just give up to give over to God so that they can come back better to us. And that's how our relationships improve. And it doesn't mean people, but it's some things and some habits we need to just let go and give over to God. That's the lesson that we need to learn from that mother. And then going from that mother was actually Pharaoh's daughter who took on Moses as her own. There are adoptive parents. There are parents who actually take on. So those are those surrogate mothers that fill in the gap to give that better opportunity to children. So there is a lesson in that learning of respect. Just because it is not your blood, it does not mean you don't have a bond with it. So remember, there is a lot of blended families. There are a lot of bonus mothers out there. And in this case, you need to learn the lesson that sometimes the bonus is the blessing in it all along. So when we go from the sacrifice to the bonus of Moses, Moses had two mothers. So in a lot of our lives, we have a natural mother. We have a mother who's a bonus mother sometimes, which is our spiritual mother. So we all need to address and, and think about some of those lessons that we've learned and how they impact our relationships. So the, the point of tonight's show is really to make you think, to make you think, okay, what is it that I've grown up with and I've allowed to impact my relationship? If it's, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it a tool that I can use to grow? So as a bonus, what was I given? How can I be a bonus parent to somebody else? How, what is it the sacrifice that I need to make? What is it that I need to let go of in order for it to come back to me more fruitful? So in that relationship that you have that, then there was Naomi. Everybody always talks about Ruth in this instant, but Naomi as a mother-in-law, she has still something in her that Ruth wanted to follow. Ruth wanted to stay with Naomi, even though she was bitter and she was hurt, there was something that Ruth wanted to follow, be with and stay with. So in this are we representing ourselves as a mother? So there, there are, we're, somebody wants to follow us. Somebody wants to be with us even when we're in our hurt and our oldest and our worst state. Somebody feels like we still have something to give, something to teach, something to learn. So it's always a place in our lives that we need to check ourselves through this walk. So as you're thinking about the things that you learn, think about what type of mother that you want to be as well. Are you going to be a bonus parent? Are you going to be a surrogate mother? Are you a spiritual mother to somebody? Are you a mother-in-law to somebody? How are you pouring into it? But then it also talked about um, Rebecca in the Bible. If you all remember the story about Rebecca, how she put her son up to actually pretend he, she, he was his older brother. And this is kind of a negative play in that because it's where people get a place of favoritism. People have learned to think that they're better than their other sibling or that they're better than other people in the world or that they deserve things. So be careful on the lessons that um, we teach in our households, how they set us up to fail in a relationship. And so that was a negative point. And when I 
said when I would talk about somebody who wasn't really teaching their child the ways of the Bible, Rebecca was one of those examples because it was all about how she loved him, her endearing relationship, but she never thought about her his relationship to the child, his relationship to the father, and definitely never his relationship to God. It was all about what she felt like he deserved, and we have to be careful on creating an atmosphere when our kids feel like they deserve things that they haven't when they don't have a true relationship with God and it's not the blessing or the flavor is God we're putting them in a place to receive things that aren't truly theirs so it was a lot of manipulation it was not a very good healthy relationship and I know everybody's relationship is not healthy with their parents but I always want you to find the positive in it so that you can learn a lesson and from the negative, learn that you don't want to do those exact same things in your relationship. So those are the things, because I remember the thing, my mother allowed me to do some of the craziest things that I wished I wanted to be when I grew up. So, and when your child tells you they're interested in different things, allow them to explore them as long as they're healthy things, because they might be the very thing that allows that child to develop to be who they want to be. I can remember now as a child, my mother loved to shop. She, she was, well, I shouldn't say she was a shopaholic. She's still a shopaholic. She might but not forgive me for saying that, but she knows she loves to shop. It was like she had to go to the store to leave with something, whether it was for her or somebody, she had to buy something. So it wasn't necessarily she had to buy something for her, but it was a need to purchase. And I can remember days that we were dragged through every outlet. That's what vacation was around an outlet. But now as an adult, Oh, it's a dread, it's a dread to go shopping, and I thank God that I have a son that loves to shop, that is a designer, because he does, and he feels that need that I don't have to do something that I really dread. So sometimes the thing that our parents actually love the most actually becomes a dread for us, because they loved it so much, it became actually punishment. Oh, I mean, and I know y'all think, oh. Your mama liked to shop. How could that be, become punishment? Because it was something that I didn't necessarily love. So now as an adult, I actually don't want to do it. So be careful as a parent and then be careful as an adult. Are you not doing these things that you need to do because it was something that your parents made you do? Is Did they make you eat something? Did they make you have a certain behavior? Did they tell you that this wasn't healthy for you? So find out for yourself now in your adult maturehood, what are the things that are good for you and your relationship? And you can't base them just on your parents' relationships. So that's important to remember. And while you're doing that, I want you to, tonight we're going to do a little interaction because I want you to, even if you're not watching this video now and you watch it later on, I want you to write down the different types of mothers that you have. And when I say the different types of mothers, you can have mothers that are blood mothers. You can have mothers that you are by marriage. You can have mothers that are there because they are your spiritual nurturers. You can have mothers there because in the work that you need somebody to guide you, kind of like a mentor, but they become a, more than a mentor in your life. You can have that grandmother. You can have all of these types type of different surrogates that are in your life and think about the lessons that you've learned. And then once you write down those lessons, you can actually correlate how you pattern those things that you've learned behind them. I can um, remember from, and I know this is like when I was five years old and this is something that I still do because I was, my great grandmother was my babysitter and we called her big mama. And I can remember sitting on her front porch, smelling the hydrangeas, being able to hide behind the shade in the bushes. But the thing that I remember is the way that she cooked her food. And to this day, I really can't stand the grit and the salt of food. So I do not cook my food with, you know, actual salt. I'm, I do seasoning, but I don't do salt. And that's just one of the impacts from early as five I just never gained a taste for salt. And then plus she couldn't have it. So it was just something that I grew up thinking, oh, was a bad thing. So anything that you weren't allowed to have as a child, do as a child, we, we get those habits to think that they were necessarily bad thing. Salt isn't bad, of course, in its appropriate place and the appropriate intake. It's just something that I've never gained a real taste for. Salty things are over salty food. So we, we transition in that because, of course, sometimes the older you get, the better it's not to have salt in your life anyway. So as you do that and run through your mind some of the things that you need to think about, I want you to think about on Mother's Day because I know Mother's Day is coming up closely. How will you honor your mother? And I want you to think about for the 
for I know as people who have lost their mothers and I know as people who have never met their actual mother who have given them birth I know it's a different type of mother relationships I know it's some dynamics where people feel like they've been hurt by their mother where they're estranged from their mother but the thing is the one thing that I want you to remember you were here so that mean your mother thought enough to give you life so no matter the circumstances that fell after that you have to remember our duty to honor that and it says in the bible honor your mother so we have to do that out of a place of respect so think about it as the person who has helped you into life whether if they were the person that raised you or not so that 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 is key in this and then for those whose mothers have passed on and i mean one thing is you have to think about all the things that they left you in the place of legacy and now think about of that legacy that they left what part of that legacy do you want to make sure that you leave for the next generation whether it's your children your nieces your nephews or just the world so that your mother can still be honored and live on what is that lesson that she taught you that you want to make sure that you pour into somebody so that means you might need to be a bonus parent somebody you might need to be a surrogate you might need to be a spiritual parent so you can have somebody to pour that lesson into don't let it be a lost lesson because i think in this generation we do lose a lot of lessons we aren't pouring back into the next generation especially those positive lessons of that will impact someone's relationship positively so we need to make sure as women we are pouring back those lessons and then as men whatever it is that your mother taught you as as far as manhood and actually treating a woman and how she taught you those things make sure you're pouring that onto your sons your daughters so it's time for us to understand that legacy that we are to be leaving behind is greater than us just remembering it and impacting us are we pouring it are we passing it on so that other people have a better life and we keep our mother's honor in other people's memory so the legacy lives past us so that's key I mean, it's great to get gifts. It's great to get flowers. But the honor to know that your mother, when she knows that you've learned something from her and you're passing it on and you want to keep that part of her alive forever and ever, that is a wonderful honor to pass along. So you all think about a way that you can pass your mother's honor along, whether it's a book, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's you just mentoring to somebody or reaching out, however it is that you need to do so those are lessons from your mother and how it impacts your relationships. So I want you to just think a moment and we're going to roll into our song and it's Mia Fields is Ashes.
and we have a little bit more time to talk. So I, I noticed I haven't got out any phone calls, and you all aren't streaming, but I know y'all are so shy sometimes. Y'all don't like to engage at this hour. But remember, you can always um, hit us up, talk about it later, and we'll answer the questions later as always here. So we're always able to go back and talk to you if you – Share this with somebody later on the show. But remember, we're talking about no, not forsaking the things that you were taught. But when people say that, remember, those are the good things. Because a lot of times we hold on to some of the bad things. And it, it makes us as adults actually weighed down in baggage because we don't know how to decipher and sift through some of the things that we should not have in our lives. It makes us have dysfunctional marriages. It makes us have dysfunctional relationships with our kids. So be aware of the lessons that you were taught if they are hindering you from having your best relationship, even with God. And some of the things that we've learned, it wasn't because people were trying to hurt us. It was just what they knew and they could only provide us the information that they knew from where they were of what they had gotten so realize it's okay not to follow the exact same steps but it's some basic basic things that we have learned as foundational things from our parents that have helped us that have kept us safe but you need to research and be aware of the things because you are a different person we live in a different time the things that affect you differently so make sure that you are connecting to people and actually not living a in a dysfunctional relationship because of broken pieces that you brought from you from your mothers and and not saying that is a bad thing but all of us have been hurt in some point in our lives or and not intentionally that person has hurt us but we have to realize that hurt people hurt people so if they were broken if they were hurt if at some point they received some kind of pain it could have overflowed on us and we're taking those broken pieces instead of releasing that baggage to have uh, healthy relationships godly relationships christian relationships and that does not mean perfect relationships and i think that's the distinction that people need to make is not a perfect relationship but it's a, rep- a relationship that you are constantly working on to be its best so realize whatever lessons that you've learned they should always empower and uplift if it is a lesson that we want to impact our lives in a positive way so it is a time to uh, for us to unpack our baggage from the hurt of our parents, from if we felt like we weren't treated the best. But the thing is, they gave us what they had, so realize that we need to tell them and give them a shout-out, that we love them, that they are great for what it is that they've done, the sacrifices that they have made, the love that they were able to give us. So remember the good things, and then unpack the baggage of the rest. Some of us need to go run and forgive our parents for whatever it is we think Think that they've done wrong to us we need to uh, run and tell them that, that we love them for some of the things that we're holding on to because we feel offended so in our mature wise stages those are the things that we need to let go to actually practice that place of honoring so that we can understand how to be better parents ourselves and be better spouses ourselves in our relationships so those are the things that we let go because then a lot of times we say I'm not going to be like my parent and the more and more you talk about the negative things that you're not going to be like. Those are the habits that you adopt. And next thing you know, when you're standing in the mirror, you have become just like they are. And those are the things that you didn't want to be. So be careful that you're not magnifying what it is that you don't want. And that is how your life is actually becoming. So it's a time to be reflective at Mother's Day. It's a time to actually be honoring. It's the time to find out what actual legacy of your parents that you want to leave behind. So as you think about this, I want you all to um, actually, I I really do want to go into a prayer right here at the end before we go off. So that be our last thing that we hear. And as always, I start a prayer with saying thank you, Father, for what it is and the point that you have gotten us through today. God, Father, thank you for those that have their mothers still with them. Thank you for those who have learned a lesson, no matter if it's a hard lesson and they had to lose their mother, but God, because we know the time that you have is the time that it is perfect. But God, wrap us in your arms and know that you have still have somebody left here to nurse. 
nurture us, to guide us, to show us. And it's not just the Holy Spirit. There is another mother. There is another woman. There is somebody out there who wants to mentor you and somebody who wants to guide you. But you have to open up your heart and be willing to accept that there is somebody out there who's willing to help you break it and find something that is not dysfunctional in your life. There's a spirit about us where we have pride because we don't want to accept help. We don't want to ask for help. We don't even sometimes want to accept love from other people. But God know that even when we're hurt, there's somebody out there who is hurting with us and allow them in this place with us. Allow them in this space with us. Don't let it become that we block everybody out. So God, for those that have lost, let them open up so that they can allow somebody to be in that place with them and they heal. God, allow those people who have an unforgiving heart to forgive their parents so that they can be in a loving place with their mothers. It doesn't mean they have to be the best friends, but it means they need to actually be in a place according to your word that they can honor. So find that place. Find that place in their heart. God is some of us that you need to strip off and delete a lot of baggage in our lives because we are easily offended. We are easily hurt. We are easily put in a place that we don't have a good relationship. And it actually is an image of how our relationship is with you, that we are offended and that we are hurt. So we need to get our relationships right with you, Father, so that you can get our relationships right with our mothers, Father. And for those of us who don't know who our mother is, who have not had a connection with our mother. God, give us the ability to find peace with that, peace with however you gave it to us, peace in not knowing, peace that it was your will for our lives. God, sometimes all we need to do is ask for a peace because it is your will and it's your God. So if that is where we are today, Father, let us not be in a place where we are still searching for the lost and missing peace because, God, you have given it to us and you have set up the guidelines in your words to give us the steps and give us the teachings and you have set up so we can have spiritual mothers. You have set up so we can have bonus mothers. You have set up so that there are places that stand in and fill in the gap. So guide us and find that place that fills in the gap for people who need it. Whether it's our youth that is missing their mothers because they have passed, our mothers because they've been incarcerated, our mothers because they are caught in the streets, whether it is drugs, whether it's alcohol. God, whatever it is, place a mother figure in everybody's life so that they can have this guy, so they can have this nurturer, so they can have this protector, have somebody to to give and show them what sacrificial unconditional loves looks like. So in the name of Jesus, we pray that in on the Mother's Day that you all have somebody who shows you the love of a mother. In the name of Jesus, we pray. So Going out on that note, I wish you all the happiest, whether it's early Mother's Day, whether whatever day you are celebrating, continue to honor your mother and love her on each and every day. I always thank you all for joining us here at the Master Relationship Mechanic Hour, and I look forward to hearing your stories about your lessons that you've learned along the journey and sharing back with me later. And I appreciate you all. And if you all want to keep following up the Master Relationship show, and where you can find me, Courtney Lee Smith, doing the week is on the Relationship Service Station or on Instagram at the Master Relationship Mechanic so that we can stay connected. But as always, continue to show up here on every Tuesday on 108 Praise. And we are here for you.